It's good to see everybody tonight. Amen. If you can't make it home, make yourself at home. Amen. We got some washcloths, towels, baptistry here. I don't think anybody have any trouble making it home. Hallelujah. First Peter five and eight. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, everybody say your adversary. He will never be on your side. Never. 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 The devil. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Psalm 17, 12. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Verse 13. Arise, O Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The English Standard Version says he's like a lion eager to tear. As a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him. Subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword. I want to speak on Arise, O Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your spirit we feel tonight. Thank you for the awakening and the recognition that you've given us. I pray, God, that we can minister for a few minutes tonight. And again, this too will become our rallying cry, our war cry, as we lift up your name and continue to endeavor to do your work. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Arise, O Lord. According to the International Bible Commentary, that is an Israelite war cry associated with taking the ark into battle. When they would carry the ark of the covenant into battle, the confidence that came from having the spirit of the Lord with them would cause them to cry, arise, O Lord. According to others, it is a messianic term meaning referring to Jesus Christ. And, of course, arise, O Lord, speaking of the resurrection in a prophetic way. Either way, the scripture tells us that the devil is going to end up confronted and disappointed by the power of a resurrected Savior, by the power of my King who will fight for me, who's already given his life for me. He will make sure that if I desire to win, if I desire to submit to his word, that Calvary will not be in vain. He has provided a way of escape. He has provided the avenue by which we can come out. Even if it has progressed to the point that the devil, who is our enemy, greatly anticipates our fall. If it looks like that the night is almost over, if it looks like that the battle is about won, if it looks like that the devil is about to tear you in pieces and destroy everything you believed in, there's still hope and God has still made a way for you to win. Luke 15 and 7 says, Likewise I say unto you that jo shall be joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth uh, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Uh, we have got to become aware tonight uh, as we feel the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, but yet in the Spirit we feel the struggle and we feel the, the conflict that has taken place. Uh, in the middle of the singing while ago, the Spirit was just really moving and I felt something come in here that's not welcome. I felt the spirit rise up in here that's not welcome. And I want to confront it and I want to let it know that this is a revival church. That this is a winning church. That this is a soul saving church. That this is a growing church. And it's built on a rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You've got to recognize, saint of God, you hear me and hear me well. You've got to recognize uh, when the ugliness of the flesh begins to well up in you uh, that it's not the will of God uh, and it is a tool of the enemy. And the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee. 
flee from you. You don't have to defeat him. You just got to push against him. And he will recognize as you declare the name of Jesus that he's beat. You've got to recognize it. When the Spirit, when the Spirit begins to minister and the Spirit begins to work, it's not all about lifting hands and flopping hands and clapping hands. But the, when you show up here with something jacked up in your life, the Lord wants to fix it. And the Word of God is going forth to let you know that you've got to rise up and declare as the Israelites did, Arise, O oh Lord, because it's time for the enemy to be disappointed. He thinks that you're going to lose. He thinks he's got you beat. He thinks he's got you defeated. But it's time tonight that the power of the Holy Ghost disappoint him. And let heaven rejoice. And let heaven rejoice. This will not be a deep message tonight. But it's a word that somebody needs to hear. That there's joy in heaven over one sinner that comes to repentance. Uh, over one person that, that, that is pulled back uh, from, the, from the precipice of hell. Uh, who is pulled back from the edge of the cliff as it were. Uh, one person who was about to give up and wash their hands of it. Uh, but the, the enemy has got to be disappointed. It's confronted, subdued. In the book of Genesis, the beginning, Brother McKinney, it's a beautiful book actually, many Bible stories, it's the beginning, it's the foundation of our faith which it is built upon. Somebody say, arise, O Lord. Arise, O Lord. The book of Genesis, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And he made a man, he made a woman, Adam and Eve. I alluded to it this morning. They were in the garden until they sinned. Brother David, there ain't no telling how long they were there. People try to explain so much stuff about history. There's no telling how long Adam and Eve were in the garden before they messed up. Because they were created adults and they were created to live forever. They were not created for death. But death came in when sin was introduced and they were expelled from the garden. And, and somewhere in the middle of all of that, uh, Cain, uh, um, excuse me, Adam and Eve come together as is the manner of a man and a woman. And a, a son is conceived and his name is Cain. Uh, and then a brother is conceived later on and his name is Abel and they're raising their two boys. Cain becomes a tiller of the ground, a farmer, if you please, and, and Abel becomes a tender of the sheep or a shepherd. And it come time to bring an offering to the Lord. It come time to bring an offering. We don't know a lot of the nuances of it. We don't really know how that it came about. We just know that it came time to bring an offering to the Lord. We do know that it appears that the offering process was instituted when the Lord had to kill an animal in order to clothe Adam and Eve. There had to be death, Brother McKinney, in order to cover up sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. That's what the Bible says. I feel in my spirit tonight that there's some folks that got to grasp a hold of this message of the simplicity of the victory that you can have through Jesus Christ. But hear this, Abel, the Bible says, brought of the first fruit of his flock and the fat thereof. That means he brought of the first crop of lambs and the best one out of them. Got that? But then the Bible simply says Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering. It would appear, Brother Johnny, that he just went out into the field and he just gathered up what he could find that he had raised and, and maybe uh, a tripper, maybe some cucumbers that were a little too big and, and some tomatoes that maybe had a bad spot on them or, or some squash that, that maybe had turned a little bit too much and rotten on one side. It, it doesn't say, it just, we just know that the Lord was displeased with that offering that he brought. And, and the Bible says unto Abel, he had respect unto his offering, but unto Cain, he did not have respect. Bring something to the Lord. You bring something to the Lord, and you offer it to him, and it's not accepted. It's time to wake up. It's time to be shaken into reality and realize Cain became angry, and he became angry at Abel. 
He became jealous of Abel. And, and later on you're going to find out that he rose up and killed his brother while they were out in the field one day. But after Cain's sacrifice was not accepted, after after he, I remember I used to have, I think I might have referenced this before, and it burned up in our house. And I wish it hadn't, but I had a little paperback Bible story book. And, and as far as I was concerned, Brother David, every picture in that was really like it happened. I loved it. I read it so much it was dog-eared. And, and I still remember some of the pictures, but, but it showed Abel's sacrifice being offered and the smoke went up into the heaven. And it showed Cain's sacrifice being offered and the smoke went over into the ground. It just kind of rolled over. So that's the picture, if you will, of these two offerings that have been made. Cain became jealous and Cain became angry and Cain became envious of Abel, and which, is, which is ridiculous in the first place because it ain't no competition. I said it's not a competition. We're not competing against one another. Matter of fact, Brother McKinney, the Bible says comparing yourself among yourself is unwise. We're not in a competition. We're in a struggle together. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. We've got to realize whatever role God has put you in, that's the role he wants you to be in and he wants you to excel at. Everybody can't fill the same role. If everybody's the eye, then that's all we do is see and we do nothing else. Cain, jealous, angry, and upset. Undoubtedly, according to Genesis chapter 4 and verse number 6, undoubtedly he became mad, sold up, puffed up, made an ugly face. Anybody else got one of those? You sure do. I'm seeing it, some of them, about right now. Mm -hmm. You're in church, man. Jesus is here. The presence of the Lord is here. There's an opportunity for you to get all your ducks in a row. There's an opportunity for you to get the kinks out. As the Bible said, to make the crooked path straight. It's here tonight. Where's your faith? Where's your excitement? Where's your anticipation at the power of the Holy Ghost doing a work in your life? And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why are you mad? Why are you angry? Why are you upset? And why is thy countenance falling? Why is your face all messed up? Why you got a mad face, old frowny face, and, and all looking soiled up and mad, talking bad, calling Abel names and making fun of him, and, and you know, sticking your tongue out at him when his back is turned or whatever the case may be? Why? Why are you why are you discombobulated? Why are you why are you all messed up? Why why are you upset? Now of course the Lord knows. Amen. The Lord knows what the problem is because he's the one that did not accept the offering, did not accept the sacrifice. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If you do what you're supposed to do, shall you not be accepted? If you do right, shall you not be accepted? And we've got to establish something right here. Before I go any further, we've got to establish something. Cain has already done wrong. He has already done wrong. But Brother Larry, the Lord is telling him, if you do right, you'll be accepted. If you're obedient, you'll be accepted. He was disobedient. He brought an unacceptable offering. Say, well, it was the best he had. If it had been the best he had, he would have been accepted. But he brought the scraps. He brought something. He just hurried up and got together. And the Lord said, why are you upset? Why is your countenance falling? Because if you do well, oh, God have mercy. That doesn't mean we're going to give you a do-over. That means get it right the next time. That means when it comes time to bring offering the next time, do it right, Cain. Do it right the next time before the Lord. You would think that he would begin to write that minute to begin to scurry around and maybe swap something to Abel for another good lamb or, or bring some of the good things out of his crop or, or fall down before God. As soon as he heard, do it right, it'll be accepted. Do it right. We have created such a, 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 a detriment in our society by people being rewarded for simply giving it a good shot. I read
read something the other day, and excuse me if you feel like that it's carnal, I think it was yesterday. But it said in the Olympics, which are going on right now in Rio de Janeiro, it said they give out a gold, they give out a silver, and they give out a bronze, and that's it. There ain't nobody getting no reward for participating. That's the way it is in the kingdom of God. You gotta understand, since you're not in a competition, the Bible speaks of having rejoicing in yourself alone. You have got to recognize and realize that I've got a work to do for God, and it's between me and Him, and it's been handed down to me, and I've got to make a decision to do what God wants me to do. And if I'm not right, then I need to be changed until I get that way. If you do well, you'll be accepted. But here's what I want to point out at you. That other part wasn't really in my message, but I felt like we needed to say it. He said, but if you don't do well, if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Now if you look that up in the NIV in the English Standard Version, it said sin croucheth at the door. So there has been something take place here. They're just getting started out. We know that Brother Terry, what would have had benefited Cain? If the Lord would have accepted that sacrifice and said, good job, good try. Brother Pete, nothing. Say, well, it may, would have made him feel good about himself. You know what the next sacrifice would have been? Just like it. But it was the Lord who had to say. Oh, hear me now tonight. I'm not going to be much longer. I promise you I'm not. I'm about out of notes, which could be scary. But he needed to be told that's not good enough. Why? Why did he need it to be told that's not good enough? So next time, he can get it right. So next time, he can get it right. Tonight, there are those under the sound of my voice. You know something, Brother McKinney? He didn't tell Cain you're no good. He didn't tell Cain you're useless. He didn't tell Cain you're sorry, you're done, you're no good for nothing, one mistake and... My little children, I write these things to you that you sin not. The plan is that you don't mess up. But if you mess up, you got to be corrected and change it. And realize, and realize that when you don't, that sin is crouching. The, the picture that you've got to see is a, of a wild lion or a wild animal that's crouching at the door as you walk away from God in anger and in frustration and in bitterness because I wasn't good enough. Join the crowd. There ain't never been any of us good enough. But thank God that we capitalized on an opportunity that said I messed up yesterday but I get a chance to do it right today. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? The devil can do nothing against you by himself. The devil can only introduce you to sin. The devil can only make the tree look good to you, but you got to eat it. The only avenue by which the devil can hinder and hurt and destroy the people of God is through sin. Sin life at the door, and it desires to have you. Unto you and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. It is the desire of the enemy to have you. It is the desire for sin to get on you because it is then and only then. But I said a while ago, and just because you don't feel it don't mean it ain't here. It's my job to pick up on stuff. And I thought it was your job just to get up and preach. That's, that's the best part out of it. I love it. I laid in the bed the other night talking to the Lord and, and, and just thinking, Brother Richard, I wish I didn't have to do nothing but preach. Because, Brother Manning, I love it. I absolutely love it. 
But there's something that rises up in our spirit. You see now what I'm saying? It is that. It is that that causes the devil anticipation. When he sees an ugly face. I wish y'all could have been at men's conference with me last year. When Brother Shatwell taught us about, uh, this is, it's on video too. Did I just lose? No. It's on video too. And he's, he's bigger than me. He's a camp meeting preacher, Sister Leanne, and he's the one that preached the message on tragedy of a wounded spirit that I gave you the, the, the five things about forgiveness. But he talked about Brother David walking down the mall with his wife. And a scantily clad lady come by. And before he knew it, his attention was completely locked on her. Well, you probably would be too. All you fellers. Ladies would too. Fellers to look, ladies to dog her out. And she believes she'd go to the mall looking like a tramp. The fellers saying, good job, God. That's, that's a joke I told you about before. But he said, boom, pretty girl. Brother David, that's not a sin. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your theology is. But you see a good-looking gal or a good-looking guy walking down, and you say, boy, she's pretty. It's over. But then, then it got in his mind, and it started festering. And he had to recognize, Brother Terry, I got to put a stop to that. I got to put a stop to that. And we learned there was a breakover point that took place right there. And the devil stands there like a, like a lion just crouching at the door, waiting on that to, to manifest itself into, you know what, baby, I got to go to the bathroom. When you're lying, you ain't got to go to the bathroom. You got to go find that gal. Come on now, this is a true story. But no, he, he rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And I was so excited because I thought I was the only preacher in the whole wide world that had to battle with stuff sometimes. But I realized that it's, it's, I'm still in the flesh, Brother David, and stuff crops its head up. But I've been given the Holy Ghost that it gives me the authority and the power to push it away. So I'm telling somebody tonight, there's something that has risen up in here in somebody's spirit. I think it's two people that has risen up in your spirit. And I'm telling you, the word of the Lord has come to you and said, resist it and push it away and disappoint hell because he stands crouching at the door waiting on you to give up. You think the devil ain't listening when you talk bad about somebody? You think the devil ain't watching when your lip starts poking out? Yes, he's watching. Yes, he's waiting. Yes, he's aware. But just like the Lord told Cain, get it right, buddy. I love you. I'm pulling for you. You were the very first human being that was created by a man and a woman coming together. I love you. Get it right, buddy. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Well, here we go right now. I feel this in the house. Well, nobody's perfect. All rain on that. This ain't about being perfect. You know what? You get the victory over this problem, you're going to have another one. But it won't be this one. And that's how you grow. And that's how you mature. And that's how you learn. Satan desires to have each and every one of us. And the avenue by which he reels us in is sin. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. But we've got to recognize that he wants to have us. And somebody's got to declare, I'm not going out that cheap. Cain was getting an opportunity to have the Lord fight for him. All he had to do was repent, turn back to God, obey his word, and give him the best. It was very simple. Think about that. Think about that, how simple it was. All that Cain had to do was the next time give God the best. Or take a bushel of vegetables, 
swap them out to Abel for the best he had left. It's in the Bible. They did it. They gave grain offerings. It's in the Bible. He, a heave offering. That's what that was. All he had to do was get it right. The Lord wasn't damning him and condemning him and, and putting a mark on him and kicking him. He didn't do that. He did not do that, Brother David, till he rose up and killed his brother. That was the sin that got Cain ostracized. It was not. It was not being out of the will of God, being disobedient to God, even possibly, you hear me right now, even making a mistake. Because even if it was a mistake, the Lord was bound to correct him. Whether it's willful or whether it's just a mistake, the Holy Ghost is going to correct you. And then you've got the opportunity to just stop it. I wrote this down. I think I've preached about it before, but I can't remember. But I wrote this down. How amazing would it be if our greatest failures remained private? Meaning they never got the opportunity to be let out. But they got in our mind, Sister Maria, and we stopped them right there. The Bible tells us very plainly, and I can't, I'm not going to be able to quote it, it's in my mind right now, but that every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. Let me tell you something right now. The Lord just revealed something to me. And this is, has nothing to do with anybody who sang tonight. But I've seen situations and times in my life when somebody at the service could really be moving and grooving and somebody get up and sing a particular song and it go... And then we, in our shallow minds, think it had something to do with the song. As if they picked the wrong one. That's crazy. I don't care if it's bumping and thumping and the Holy Ghost is moving and grooving and somebody feels led to get up there and sing, sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. How could that be the devil's tool? What happens is, is a fleshly spirit rises up. And there's a conflict that takes place. And the devil is crouching at the door. And when somebody says or does or thinks or responds in a way that magnifies that spirit, the devil says, Whoa. But I come to tell somebody tonight, the word of the Lord gives you a way out. Arise. Arise, oh Lord. And disappoint him. <laughs> Do you not think how beautiful that is, Brother David? That the word of the Lord says, Arise, O Lord. It was a war cry when the children of Israel began to carry the Spirit out there. That's what we're trying to do tonight, saints of God, is we've got to say, Wait a second. Wait a second, stupid. This ain't my fight. Arise, O Lord. Arise, O Lord, and disappoint him. Because you see, he thought he had me. <laughs> He thought he found the thing that he could hook and, and reel me in and pull me away. Uh, but I got to let him know tonight, uh, he almost did. He almost did. It was there and I thought it and I thought how easy it would be. But you see, I've come too far. I've come too far to give up and be all weak and give down. And we're too close. Uh, we're too close to the coming of the Lord. We're too close to the coming of the Lord. He thought he had me. Somebody needs to recognize that in the Holy Ghost tonight, you are being given the opportunity of a lifetime. He thought he had me. But I stand tonight with the Holy Ghost to let him know he's going to be disappointed. 
I might have not have done well. I might have made a mistake. I might have allowed something in that shouldn't have been there. But I'm lifting up my voice tonight and I'm declaring, Arise, O Lord. And it's not just a cry for help, but it's a cry of a warrior that knows that God is with me. I'm not just struggling alone, but I'm going to come out of this stronger than I went in. I'm going to come out of this more capable than when I went in. 